20 years ago, who the hell would have thought that we'd be seeing it in the Olympics? You know, it was just something that we did. What did your parents think about when you started snowboarding in 86? Like, they're like, get a job. <laughs> Go to college, get a job. You can't make any money at that. Like, yeah, you're probably right, but I'm gonna try. You know, but it was never prominently in your face like it is now. Like, it's, it's all over everywhere. All these things that we think we take so for granted, but there's all these people that crave information about snowboarding that don't know where to get it. They don't know how to get from learning how to ride down the hill to like being a part of a community. And that's where we want to bring those people in and say, dude, you're a snowboarder. Come be a part of this thing. It doesn't matter if you're doing 1440s or if you just turn. You want to make the switch from a person that goes snowboarding once a year to identifying as a snowboarder. That's who I am. That's a big part of the consideration that we show maybe our lifestyle to other areas and open up and, and say, hey, yeah, let's go out and have fun together. So many girls look at the sport and they're like, oh, my boyfriend does that, or like, that's a sport for my brother. You know, these girls need to see that it's not just for men, you know? It doesn't matter your gender or your race or, you know, who you are. It's, it's for everyone. It's kind of the whole point of snowboarding. It's amazing that a piece of wood can become the key for people to come together. It's amazing. It's crazy. That's what the community builds. They build the culture, and then they start to represent the culture. And back to that, I think we're in a position now, you know, from a generational perspective in the industry that now it's time to represent our culture that we've built.